We're pretty close to finishing up the rough outline of our barbell prescription for masters, adults over 40. Make sure you check out our videos on the squat, deadlift, and press prescriptions. Today, we're going to talk about the bench press. The bench press is perhaps the most ubiquitous of barbell movements, if you go by the total number of people who do it. This means it is also the one that produces the largest amount of average stupidity per rep. The bench, through no fault of its own, is responsible for the lion's share of injuries in the weight room. But if you understand the why and the how of the bench, it need produce neither stupidity nor injuries. It's like any other medicine. You use it the right way and for the right reasons, and it can be powerful. You use it the wrong way. Hi, I'm Jonathan Sullivan, and welcome back to Gray Steel. You'll recall from our video on the press prescription that a press is a movement in which a load is pushed away from the body. In the bench press, a load is held in the hands while the athlete is supine on a bench, and the load is lowered and then raised. The bench comes in lots of flavors, some more useful and less silly than others. There are dumbbell bench presses and reverse incline bench presses and narrow grip bench presses and dynamic effort bench presses, lots of variations. We prescribe some of these variations for certain indications, including mobility limitation, shoulder or elbow problems, or as useful adjuncts to training the standard bench for more advanced athletes. But in the starting strength system, our focus is on the plain old vanilla bench press, in which the lifter lays supine, feet flat on the floor, grip wide enough to make the forearms completely vertical at the bottom of the movement, back arched, chest up, shoulder blades retracted behind. The bar is lowered from a position directly over the shoulder joints to a point that is approximately at the nipple line for most people of normal body habitus and body composition. This movement pattern is accessible to almost all trainees with two arms. Again, some folks require modifications to allow for shoulder mobility limitations or pathology, for inability to lay completely supine, and so on. We'll talk about these modifications in future videos. But just about everybody can do some form of bench press. Thus, even very weak or limited masters athletes who cannot squat or press can almost always train as deadlift bench specialists. Of all the exercises we train in the starting strength system, the bench is perhaps the simplest. It's also the most limited. Because it is performed supine, the bench does not train balance like the press, the squat, and the deadlift. And it does not impose an axial load on the spine and the hips. Its kinetic chain is short, and its range of motion is also relatively short. Where the bench redeems itself is its ability to build significant upper body strength. You can bench a lot more than you can press, and because the exercise is so accessible to most people, it's great for building confidence and establishing a pattern of success with even the most weak and deconditioned masters. Despite its limited range of motion, the bench recruits a respectable volume of muscle tissue. When performed properly, the bench uses the shoulder muscles and triceps, the forearm muscles, the traps and lats, and the abdominal muscles. It even recruits contribution from the lower body musculature, which must contract isometrically to help stabilize the lifter and brace the body on the bench for optimal performance. It trains a basic human movement pattern, pushing something away from you. The bench recruits a good volume of muscle into a fair range of motion and allows us to move a lot of weight. So, although it's not as powerful as the other three movements in our prescription, it does satisfy our strength training exercise selection criteria. The bench also fulfills our exercise medicine prescription criteria. It's a very safe exercise when performed properly, although it often isn't. Thus, the bench is the most dangerous exercise of our big four, based on the amount of havoc rot and total body count. This is mostly because it's irresistible to the testosterone poisoned man-child who wants big chesticles, or the late middle-aged deconditioned guy in the throes of midlife crisis who would like to devolve into his former incarnation as a testosterone poisoned man-child. Both of these unhinged phenotypes are drawn to the bench 
enthusiastically jumping in without proper technical or training preparation, coaching, a basic grasp of what they're doing, or more importantly, spotters or safeties. They put too much weight on the bar, they perform the movement poorly and without precautions, and they end up with a bar crashing down onto their throat, gut, chest, or mouth. This is not ideal, but when performed properly, with a few simple precautions, the bench is very safe indeed. Learn what you're doing. Do it right. Do it smart. If at all possible, do it with a qualified coach, and you won't contribute to injury statistics. Like the other exercises in our prescription, the bench has a wide therapeutic window. Massive loads can be lifted in the long term, but you can start with a 10-pound bar and make safe, steady gains rapidly. The bench is not as comprehensive as the other exercises, but it covers a lot of ground. It does little to train balance, and it doesn't load the spine and hips, although it probably increases bone mineral density in the humerus and forearm bones, which are frequently fractured in master's populations. It does improve strength, power, stamina, and body composition, with the potential for significant accumulation of muscle mass. By increasing muscle mass and work capacity, it improves insulin sensitivity, and it combats frailty. And the bench is simple and efficient. You have to know what you're doing. You have to be smart and safe, and there are technical subtleties to the bench. But the bench can be learned quickly. Remember, these videos aren't intended to instruct you in the movements. Bench, squat, press, and deadlift form the core of a comprehensive exercise prescription for the master's athlete. With these four powerful exercises, you can get a lot stronger, pack on a bunch of new muscle, and improve all the fitness attributes in a safe, simple, progressive, rational, dose-dependent manner. I hope you've enjoyed this series on the barbell prescription. We'll have more to say about all these exercises in the future. In the meantime, be on the lookout for videos on other topics, including an upcoming series on diabetes, on macronutrients, lung disease, and other topics of interest to the athlete of aging.